everyone. A very good morning. You're watching the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are the latest headlines this morning. A day after a Delhi court bans a global broadcast of the documentary India's Daughter, BBC telecasts it in Britain. Government keeps option of joint session open after passing insurance bill amid opposition in the Lok Sabha. Yogendra Yadav and Prashant Bhushan removed from Ahmadi Party's top decision-making panel PAC decision taken in marathon meeting of its national executive. And US ambassador to South Korea attacked in Seoul, attacker sus suspect to be a, a, opposed to joint uh, South Korea US military troops. The BBC telecast a documentary on the 2012 Delhi gang rape late last night amid efforts by the government to block it. A Delhi court had upheld a ban on the film. The documentary India's Daughter is produced by Leslie Udwin. BBC's uh, Channel 4 telecast it uh, from 3.30 a.m. A BBC statement defended its decision stating that the documentary provides a revealing insight into a horrific crime that led to protests across India demanding changes in attitudes towards women. In India, the BBC's Newsnight program broadcast an eight-minute edited version of the film. The screening of the documentary sparked a raging debate in Parliament yesterday. The government told both houses that there was a conspiracy against India through the telecast. Well, the foreign documentary sparked outrage in the Rajya Sabha yesterday. Home Minister Rajnath Singh said that the government will not allow airing the documentary on Indian television channels and assured a thorough probe to find out who allowed the shooting of the film inside Delhi's Tihar jail. Okay, okay. The foreign documentary on the Delhi gang rape case triggered uproar in the upper house on Wednesday. Members raised objections during a reference to International Women's Day, slamming the outlandish remarks by one of the convicts, Mukesh. The TV channel is not film number one. नंबर जो जो डीजी जेल है उस समय के ओके और जो अधिकारी हैं उनके खिलाफ कार्रवाई हो इसका आश्वासन दिया जाना चाहिए आपको तुरंत कार्रवाई करनी चाहिए थी दो दिन से ये बात चर्चे में आ रही है आप लोग विचार करेंगे उसके बाद करेंगे ये क्रॉफ़ेडाइल पीएस नहीं चाहिए औरतों को the chair also took strong exception to the interview and demanded government's explanation after committing a horrendous heinous crime he is justifying it it is unbelievable so I want, I want the government to take action, how the interview came, take action and report to, the, report to this house. And you are doing this. All women members from opposition you benches trooped into the well for allowing the convict to give an interview. They were joined by their male colleagues from the opposition parties, forcing the chair to adjourn the house for 15 minutes. House is adjourned for 15 minutes. 15 minutes. When the House reassembled, Home Minister Rajnath Singh sought to mollify the agitated members. He said the terms and conditions were violated by the documentary maker. The Home Minister said that a restraining order had been obtained against the telecast of the documentary on International Women's Day on Sunday and a report has been sought from Tihar Jail where the convict was interviewed. The government has taken necessary legal action and obtained a restraining order from the court disseminating the contents of the film. Our government condemns the incident of 16 December 2012 in the strongest possible terms and will not allow any attempt by any individual, group or organization to leverage such unfortunate incidents for commercial benefits. Some women MPs also staged a walkout as a mark of protest and urged the government to ensure speedy justice for the victim. However, there were voices in support to telecast the documentary. But the reality is what the man spoke reflects the views of many men in India. Yeah. And why are we shying away from that? In everything glorifying India and we are perfect, we are not confronting the issues which need to be really uh, confronted. We were very surprised in the last two days when this topic was the burning topic of the day as to how those people got permission. I am told that the permission was given as a study case not to be used outside at all, not to get into the public arena and to be used as an input for how to deal with such criminals. Be it as it may, that may have been the case, 
then today the inquiry has to be made how it all got into the public arena. Jin jail ke adhikariyo ne unko ye permission di, to jo bhi isme adhikari log hain, to manne grah mantri ji se mera ye kehna hai ki aapko iski ek jaat bithani chahiye. The Home Minister also said that he has spoken to Information and Broadcasting Ministry and told them to explore ways to ensure that the documentary was not broadcast even abroad. Kriti Mishra, Raj Sabha TV. Well, the debate over telecast of uh, the BBC documentary also rocked the Lok Sabha. Home Minister Rajnath Singh said, said that he was uh, stunned as to how permission was granted for the convict's uh, interview to take place inside the jail. Adyaksh Maudya. जिस डॉक्यूमेंट्री को लेकर केवल यह सदन ही नहीं बल्कि सारा देश इस समय सचमुच अपने को शर्मिंदा महसूस शर्मिंदगी महसूस कर रहा है उसके संबंध में इस सदन के भी सम्मानित सदस्यों ने भी अपनी चिंता व्यक्त की है और अपनी नाराजगी व्यक्त की है मैं यह सदन को अवगत कराना चाहता हूं कि इस घटना के संबंध में जो ही मुझे जानकारी मिली इसी प्रकार की नाराजगी मेरे अंदर भी पैदा हुई थी और तुरंत संबंधित अधिकारियों को टेलीफोन मिलाकर मैंने इस संबंध में जानकारी हासिल की द होम मिनिस्टर लुकिंग टू काम स्ट्रॉन्ग ऑपोजिशन प्रोटेस्ट एज मेंबर्स डिमांडेड एक्शन विद द डिसम्बर सिक्सटीन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेल्व गैंग रेप कॉन्विक्ट बींग अलाउ टू गिव एन इंटरव्यू फ्रॉम इन साइड द हाई सिक्योरिटी तिहार जेल Singh informed the house that the NOC to shoot the film was given by the Home Ministry in 2013 under the UPA government. However, restrictions laid down were flouted. 24 July 2013 को ये documentary इस documentary के लिए उस convicted जो inmate था, जो convicted जो अपराधी था, उसका interview लेने के लिए इजाजत दी गई। एक rapist का interview लेने की इजाजत ये कैसे दी गई? किन परिस्थितियों में दी गई? ये 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 सचमुच ये बहुत ही चौंकाने वाली घटना है वाले Earlier during the zero hour several women members demanded a detailed inquiry and strong action against those responsible for lapses in adherence to norms Shame that statement made in the documentary you see in the newspaper madam it is very shocking it is very shameful for the whole indian community very shameful we should protest strongly the whole house should protest against this we have to tackle this problem right from the grassroots from where the mindset becomes such that you insult women you do not understand that they give consent the right to their bodies to give consent is theirs it cannot be abrogated to somebody else they need to be able to feel safe at all times Delhi police has obtained a restraining order from the Delhi High Court prohibiting transmission of the interview till further orders. The Home Minister met the Delhi Police Commissioner on Wednesday evening. A probe is being carried out into restrictions not being followed. Today we obtained the we moved the regular uh, the the competent court and the court has given uh, regularized the order of the duty magistrate and uh, a copy of the order has been uh, served on BBC also by our officers. and we have also circulated it among various uh, media you know uh, agencies as well as uh, electronic media so that there is no transgression of law by any print or media uh, pr print or electronic media organization the hour long documentary film is based on extensive interviews of the victims parents the convicts and their families one of the jailed convicts blames the victim for the gang rape the filmmakers plan to challenge the ban in court pranav goswami's report for rajya sabha television well, the lok sabha passed the insurance laws amendment bill on wednesday the government uh, has said that the bill keeps in mind the needs of the insured though the opposition kept up its tirade against the bill yasmo the bill to increase fti in the insurance sector from 26% to 49% was passed in lok sabha today The government claimed that this would help the sector overcome capital crunch and would also take care of the interests of the consumers. The government has also said that if the bill gets defeated in Rajya Sabha, the option of a joint session is open. 
our hope would be that the Congress would support it. Uh -huh. uh, though after the debate in uh, the Lok Sabha today, uh, there is a real question mark there. We'll have to see how all of that unfolds. Uh, but of course, you know, if the bill is defeated in the Rajya Sabha, uh -huh. having been passed in the Lok Sabha, uh -huh. that does open an opportunity for a joint session. Earlier in the day, Congress, TMC and left parties led other opposition parties in opposing the bill in Lok Sabha. But if there is any failure to do so, immediately their registration certificate will be cancelled. But then what happens to the people who are insured by these companies? Sir, you can never depend on foreign companies to really help out in health insurance sector. Mostly, the insurance companies are cheating people. In the health sector, they say, we'll give you cashless treatment. But later they say that your claim is not tenable. Please come now. Down. How many people? The government is evading the powers, the legislative powers of the parliament against all parliamentary traditions, customs and conventions of this house. For what purpose? Just to satisfy the interest of the multinational corporate insurance companies. The government had brought in an ordinance to raise the FDI cap in insurance sector, a move that was strongly criticized by the opposition. With the numbers on its side, it was a smooth sailing for the government in the Lok Sabha, but the going may not be that easy in Rajya Sabha. With inputs from Pranav Goswami and Sham Sundar, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the Coal Mine Special Provisions Bill of 2015 was also passed in the Lok Sabha on Wednesday. The government claims that the bill will ensure transparency in the allocation of coal mines. It had brought in an ordinance for the auction of coal blocks, which will now be replaced by the bill. During the debate, the opposition criticized the government for using the ordinance route. Here's more. Coal Minister Piyush Goel has said that coal producing states will benefit from the bill passed in the lower house on Wednesday. He also claimed that the Narendra Modi led government had brought in more transparency to the entire sector. We have been in the last nine days, and I am happy that the new auction will start from today. In his reply, the minister also touched upon several queries raised by opposition members. In particular, he clarified opposition apprehensions about reverse bidding and end users. I will tell you that one 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 block, the technical committee, which is every department of people, members, the technical committee has decided how to do it, how to do it, how to do it, how to do it. No one block has not transferred from steel to power. During the debate on the bill, the opposition raised several questions regarding it. The Congress, TMC, CPIM and BJD raised the issues of time frame for disbursement of royalty, reverse bidding, end users and the duration of leases. Consult with the concerned coal bearing state when you are determining what will be in a regulated sector, what will be in a non-regulated sector. Personally, you may be interacting with the government, but this should be in the law because in future, it is not that you will be continuing in this ministry, somebody else will come. 1993 onwards, there is a dilution. Now these national resources are now the, are being diverted towards the state. I have no problem in the states because there are five states which have 90%, 99% of the coal reserves. What about the rest of the 25 states, sir? Our union is bound together by a very delicate promise that each state has made to each other. That all, that's why the constitution makers did not provide national resources in the state list, sir. The opposition moved several amendments to the bill, all of which were defeated. Sham Sundar's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Well, we'll slip into a short break now. On the other side, their bids were 60,000 crore rupees on the first day of telecom auction. That and much more. Stay tuned to the right back. In the Maths Factor, we travel through time and space and see how Maths has evolved and how it is a part of the world around us. Join us on Rajya Sabha Television. Watch the Maths Factor every Sunday at 8 a.m.
Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, less than a month after coming to power in Delhi, the Aam Aadmi Party is dealing with its biggest internal crisis. Leaders Yogendra Yadav and Prashant Bhushan were removed from the party's top decision-making panel yesterday after a marathon meeting. Meanwhile, party chief Arvind Kejriwal, who stayed away from the meet, will remain convener despite offering a resignation yesterday. Yes, ma'am. Just a month after the resounding victory in Delhi, Aam Aadmi Party is at crossroads again. The national executive meeting in Delhi turned into a firefight to douse the infights raging over its chief Arvind Kejriwal's functioning. War of words and letters in the last few days exposed the ugly spat within the party over the leadership issue. But the executive committee finally cracked the whip on Wednesday. It removed two key dissidents, Yogendra Yadav and Prashant Bhushan from party's political affairs committee. राष्ट्रीय कार्यकारिणी ने बस ये तय किया है कि मैं और योगेंद्र यादव अभी पीएससी के मेंबर नहीं रहेंगे कोई जिम्मेदारी और दी गई है वो, वो सब बाद में तय होगी ये तो मेजोरिटी डिसीजन है जो भी मेजोरिटी डिसीजन होता है राष्ट्रीय कार्यकारिणी का वो मान्य होता है पार्टी के एक अनुशासित कार्यकर्ता की तरह पार्टी मुझे जो आदेश देगी मुझे जो भूमिका देगी वो मैं पूरी तरह से निभाने की कोशिश करूंगा पार्टी के एनी ने ये प्रस्ताव भी पास किया कि पार्टी के दो वरिष्ठ साथी श्री योगेंद्र यादव जी और श्री प्रशांत भूषण जी उन्हें पीएससी की जिम्मेदारियों से मुक्त करके नई जिम्मेदारियां दी जाएं जो तय की जाएंगी बोथ लीडर्स हैव बीन ओपनली क्रिटिकल ऑफ केजरीवाल एंड द पार्टी इन रिसेंट टाइम्स आप हैज एक्यूज देम ऑफ कॉन्स्पायरिंग टू अनसीट केजरीवाल एंड वर्किंग अगेंस्ट द पार्टी इंटरेस्ट Hours before the meet began, Kejriwal decided to step down from the post of the party convener. A dejected Kejriwal skipped the meeting a day after he expressed his disappointment over the voices of dissent. However, his resignation was not accepted by the party leaders. Arvind ji ka istifa jo hai, wo rashtri karyakarini ne tab bhi accept nahi kiya tha, aur jo rashtri karyakarini ka faisla tha, us par Arvind ji ki raay spast nahi thi. कि वो राष्ट्रीय कार्यकारिणी ने जो फैसला किया है उसको वो स्वीकार कर रहे हैं या स्वीकार नहीं कर रहे दिस इज इन द फर्स्ट टाइम दैट द पार्टी इज फेसिंग सच अ क्राइसिस बिफोर द दिल्ली असेंबली पोल्स देयर वर वॉइसेस ऑफ डिसिडेंस ओवर केजरीवाल्स लीडरशिप स्टाइल लीडर्स लाइक शाजिया इल्मी क्विट द पार्टी साइटिंग लैक ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी विद इन द पार्टी एज द रीजन ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी Well, joining me for a chat this morning to talk about uh, the latest uh, crisis to hit the Aam Aadmi Party is the political editor of the Business Standard, Aditi Fard. This morning, Aditi, uh, you know, morning. were you surprised that Yogendra Yadav and Prashant Bhushan were removed from the uh, top decision-making uh, body of the party? You know, they've been they are no, no longer a part of the political affairs uh, uh, committee. So, were you surprised by the move? And what next for these two leaders, really? Well, I can't say that I was surprised. Although, uh, I mean, given the background, because everyone who has been critical of uh, Kejriwal has uh, not uh, been comfortable mm. in staying on in the party, uh, there have also been complaints about the way uh, Arvind Kejriwal is surrounding himself with people who uh, only echo what he wants to mm. or say mm. what he wants to hear. Uh, but it's a very uh, i think a very sad development that uh, this has happened mm. and uh, uh, we have to now see what uh, arvind kejriwal is going to do because i believe that on the telephone he was in constant touch with the uh, with the meeting that was going on and uh, with the, the 21 member committee and was constantly telling people what to do and what not to do mm. and how mm. to proceed and so on so presumably he feels that he has a whip hand and the party uh, has come to power in delhi with in with such stupendous numbers because of him mm. now um, that's both true and not true i think uh, in a political party you don't really know who does how much work it's very hard to quantify no, but could the situation have been handled differently and what does it say really about arvind kejriwal's leadership uh, i don't know if it could have been handled differently you know mm. this party is um uh, fairly unstructured there were uh, almost equally as many people critical of kejriwal's decision even through the voting uh, as there were uh, elsewhere mm. i mean as there were on the other side uh, this happens in other parties also mm. we didn't expect it to happen in up and did, did you ex i mean did you expect it to happen this soon i mean there were voices of dissent within the aam aadmi party there was you know a little bit of uh, complaining and counter complaining happening all throughout but within one month of the delhi elections did you expect such a huge crisis i think 
uh, this crisis was inevitable mm. because the issue was the if you look at the bigger issue cutting uh, i mean uh, cutting through the the personality clashes and the mm. egos and all that uh, the real issue is what do you do with victory mm. you are in a in a fantastic position in delhi do you build on delhi or do you go out mm. if you go out your uh, quality control suffers you have to delegate and at one level i think this says a lot about the aam aadmi party that arvind kejriwal is not ready to delegate but at the same time uh, it's also true that uh, when the last time the aam aadmi party expanded too fast uh, it did win four seats in hmm. in uh, punjab but uh, it just kind of frittered away all its gains so i really don't know what is the right way of looking at this it's the party and the leadership which has to take a call uh but for ordinary people like me who are interested in politics and who are uh, who were very enthused uh, about uh, aam aadmi party's victory in delhi um it's a very very disappointing development you know do, do you see further rebellion within the party itself sometime in the near future and this plays out perfectly in the hands of the aam aadmi party's uh, political rivals doesn't it Uh, certainly it plays out beautifully in the hands of the political rivals who are saying that you know you are just like us uh, you claim to be a party with a difference but you are exactly like us mm. uh, how it will play out it's hard to say i still feel that a compromise can be reached mm. uh, that everyone is good at something everyone is not good at everything mm. so the what you are good at is what is the job that you have to be given so I mean, at the moment, uh, Arvind, Arvind Kejriwal has decided, uh, on the advice of his lieutenants, that uh, Yogendra Yadav and Prashant Bhushan are not good enough to be members of PSC, mm. but has not said they are not good enough to be anything. Mm. So we have to see what uh, other work they are given and uh, whether they spring back, and whether Kejriwal's worst fears, which is that alternate centers of power will be established in AAP. which will then challenge him hmm. uh, and his supporters uh, whether that happens right all right we'll have to leave to that thank you so much adit farnes for joining us on the program Thanks. this morning and sharing your views on this particular subject moving on now foreign secretary subramanyam jay shankar met pakistani leaders in islamabad and said both sides have agreed to narrow differences jay shankar held a talks with his pakistani counterpart ajaz ahmed choudhury in what happens to be the first high level contact between the two countries 7 uh, months in 7 months now the foreign secretary also met pakistani prime minister nawaz sharif sharif said both countries need to start a new chapter in their relationship by working through dialogue jay shankar's visit is seen as an ice breaker pakistan is hoping that it would be a prelude to starting the stalled composite dialogue process No, I wasn't personally. I wasn't expecting anything spectacular from that visit. It was more more of an icebreaker. It is an opportunity to take pick up the pieces from where they had been left off. It will probably lead to the start of a dialogue process. Well, for all the other national news and updates, let's take you nationwide. The biggest ever auction of 2G and 3G airways began on a high note on Wednesday, where the operators making bids worth an estimated 60,000 crore rupees. Six rounds of bidding in all four bands were held. The procedure will continue today as well. The government expects to raise nearly one lakh crore rupees through the auction. The centre has announced setting up city-wise task forces to draw up action plans to develop Ajmer, Allahabad, and Vishakhapatnam as smart cities. they will have representatives from ministries of urban development and external affairs state governments and cities and the united states trade development agency trinamool congress has nominated trade union leader dola sen for the by election to a lone rajya sabha seat on the 20th of march the seat fell vacant after the resignation of srinjoy bose in the wake of the sharda chit fund scam Sinjoy's term was due to expire in August 2017. Nominations can be filed till the 10th of March while polling will be held on the 20th. Seychelles released 19 Indian fishermen after detaining them for more than a month. Most of them come from districts of Kerala and Tamil Nadu. 
They were transported to their homes by the district administration. Efforts are on to secure the release of two captains who are still being held captive by the Seychelles Island Coast Guard. Let's now take a look at the events lined up for today in our segment The Day Ahead. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley will meet heads of public sector banks and financial institutions to review achievements under priority sector lending and progress made under the Pradhan Mantri Jandhan Yojana. The quarterly review meeting will also focus on improving the performance of the banks through steps like capital infusion. The Executive Committee of the DMK will meet in Chennai today. The meeting will be chaired by Party President M. Karnanidhi. The party is expected to discuss measures to strengthen support base ahead of the next assembly elections. Cross-examination process is also underway. A Uber cab rape case survivor and many witnesses will face cross-examination. This comes a day after the Delhi High Court granted permission to accused Shiv Kumar Yadav to recall all 13 witnesses. The court maintained that it had to be done in the interests of fairness. Moving on to some international news now, the three-day-long negotiations between Iran and uh, the six major world powers ended late on Wednesday without a structured final deal. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said tough challenges remain to seal the agreement with Iran to stop it from acquiring nuclear weapons. He, however, pledged not to be distracted by external politics to seal a deal. He also insisted that simply demanding Iran's capitulation was no way to get a nuclear deal with the Islamic Republic. His Iranian counterpart, Mohammad Javed Zarif, also acknowledged that progress had been made in the talks, but much work remained. Talks will now resume on the 15th of March. We continue to be focused on reaching a good deal, the right deal, that closes off any paths that Iran could have towards fissile material for a weapon, and that protects the world from the enormous threat that we all know a nuclear-armed Iran would pose. We will return to these talks on the 15th of March, recognizing that time is of the essence, the days are ticking by, and important decisions need to be made. We are not far from reaching an agreement. There are gaps that need to be filled, serious ones. But that doesn't mean that they are not, uh, we are not capable of uh, moving forward. Well, for more international news and updates, here's our world wrap. At least 32 miners were killed in a coal mine blast in eastern Ukraine on Wednesday. The blast took place near the bombed out shell of uh, Donetsk airport. The accident comes nearly three weeks into a ceasefire deal that was held for the most part. Edward Snowden says that he is not being offered a fair trial if he returns to the United States. The United States wants Snowden to stand trial for leaking extensive secrets of electronic surveillance programs by the National Security Agency. A Turkish Airlines plane carrying 224 passengers was evacuated after it missed the runway on landing at Kathmandu Airport. The incident took place after the aircraft took a circle in the sky before landing due to poor visibility. All 227 passengers and 11 crew members were safely evacuated. U.S. Ambassador to South Korea Mark Lippert was attacked in Seoul. The U.S. Embassy said that he was being treated at a local hospital but is in stable condition. Seoul police said Lippert was slashed on his right cheek and hand with a small razor blade on Wednesday. The suspect was opposed to the joint South Korea-U.S. military drills that launched earlier this week. And time now for all the sports action. Here's our sports beat. Zena Nawal and the women's uh, double pair of uh, Ashwini Ponappa and Jwala Gutta won the, their respective matches to reach the second round of the All England Championship yesterday. Zena beat uh, Bellitrix Manupatti of uh, Indonesia 21 8, 21 12, while Jwala and Ashwini defeated uh, Malaysian team of Amelia Alicia Anshelly and Fei Chong Su 21 12, 22 20. Kidambi Srikanth and Parupalli Kashyap, however, lost the opening round matches. 
Australia made a record total of 417 for 6 against Afghanistan in the World Cup after a blistering dis batting display. They also registered the biggest winning margin of 275 runs in the tournament's history. David Warner hit 178 of 133 bowls. Steve Smith scored 95 while Glenn Maxwell struck 88 in 39 deliveries. Afghanistan were dismissed for 142 with Mitchell Johnson and Mitchell Stark sharing six wickets. Michael Phelps could be reinstated to the US team for the FINA World Championships in August. The record-setting swimmer was removed from the World Championship team as part of punishment for a drunken driving arrest at the end of September. Well, that's it on this edition of The Breakfast News. Have a nice day.